How's everybody doing today? I got four piles of wood chips, roughly all about the same size, probably about four feet tall, six feet wide. And I've been just kind of experimenting with things in the garden over the last few years, especially things that as a disabled person will make it easier for me to garden. And I think if there's any way to keep weeds down, it's worth experimenting with. And a lot of people have really strongly encouraged me not to use wood chips. And I think because if we ask the question, are, are wood chips good for your garden? <clears throat> I think that the, the common answer is absolutely not. Don't do it. You know, just don't do it. But I think the truth is yes and no. Wood chips are not good for your garden if you're going to put them in the soil and then rototill them in. Because what that does is it ties up the available nitrogen that is in your soil because nitrogen is what's needed to, to break down the wood chips. And also as a result of tilling the wood chips in, you will change your soil pH. And you can counter that with lime, but it's probably gonna be a large amount of lime. And I think the other thing too, let's take a look at this. When people talk about putting wood chips in their garden, I think that they're thinking things more like, you know, that one right there, a big chip. They're not thinking about what I'm told are called arborist chips, which are, which is what this pile is. As you can see in this pile, this is a combination of things like needles, twigs, bark, leaves, uh, you know, and, and little limbs of trees. So it's a good mixture. And as you can see, I just stirred that pile a little bit. And it's a very nice, rich black color in there. So the reason why I would say yes, though, when I mentioned yes and no, no, they're not good to till into your garden. And don't do that. You will damage your soil pH and you'll have to wind up putting a ton of lime in it. And I don't know, it could take a while to recover from that. However, the reason why I say yes is because most people that advocate for wood chip gardening, they don't till it in, you know what I'm saying? So if we take a look over here, these tomatoes that you see right here, you know, they're just starting to flower and they're not too bad. They're about maybe three feet tall, I'd say. They were planted at the same time these ones were, which are already bearing fruit and a, a fairly significant number of fruit as you can see now if you notice the one difference between these tomatoes and there are some down there that I had transplanted that are bearing fruit in full transparency there no pun intended but the difference between these two rows is that I have wood chips separating what was my onions okay which you can see there are some fairly decent size baseball size onions down there but these tomatoes are volunteers here they've just come from last year when i was chucking rotten tomatoes outside of the boundary of the garden and this year we enlarged it on both sides <clears throat> and so these volunteer tomatoes came up and they are doing far better than the ones that i planted and it's just mind-blowing to me and one thing you'll notice too is that i can walk right down there there's no weeds to speak of i see one clump of weeds there i guess but there's really no no weeds to speak of there in the pathway except for that right there that you can see but the difference is to me staggering you see the very bushed out tomatoes bearing fruit here next to the wood chips and you see those tomatoes they're not bad don't get me wrong they you know they they look like they should for the amount of time that it has been since i planted them but and i i have good soil here really good soil and so one thing that i think is making the major difference right now because i don't believe the wood chips have been here long enough to to break down i mean maybe they're providing a environment for beneficial fungus and things like that I'm sure that could be the case but what i'm thinking more than anything is that i've been battling with weeds for the last couple of months here in the garden and i'm not battling with it over here so there's nothing to rob nutrients and also on top of there being nothing to rob nutrients the water retention 
that you get with wood chips seems to be so great. And so I think what I'll do, finish this year out, I'm going to try to spread wood chips as I can on half of this garden. When you see that other fence there, you're, you're roughly seeing 50% of this garden. There's another 50% you don't see beyond that. Uh, and then we have a corn patch down there, but I'm just gonna back out here so you guys can see that the difference that I'm talking about. I mean, you, you gotta notice that, right? I mean, that pile is just absolutely full. And again, the ones on the extreme left are volunteers that grew up among my onions. I planted onions there. And by the way, tomatoes and onions are good companion plants, but holy cow. If you look at the second row in the middle, that I planted, they were transplants that I purchased. Um, we planted them and then of course the wood chips is on one side. In the same time here in the third row on the right, these tomatoes were also planted at the same time the middle row was and they are doing not nearly as good as either the first or the or the second row there and again just just to illustrate the point this big pile of tomatoes in and amongst my onions and actually i got some garlic on the corner here too these weren't planted and these two other rows of tomatoes were probably 18 inch tall plants when they went in the ground at that time, there was nothing here at all other than onions. So these have since just sprouted up and just overtaken my onions. And I really believe it's because there's less, uh, there's less weeds, obviously, so there's more nutrients in the soil. And I believe that, that wood chips are truly helping with water retention. And so because I kind of let people talk me out of this, I didn't put too much wood chips in here. I did like half a row here just to experiment with it. And let's just take a walk down here so you guys can see um, in full transparency before I explain any further. This row that you see the volunteers in with the onions, all of that I raked up to build up soil to make a row. And it's just killing my back. And I just couldn't, I couldn't continue uh, about at the rate I was raking. And so I'll show you before we go on. You can see that this seems to be about three feet, three feet wide or so to me. And if you look down the rest of the row, I only did it about maybe two and a half feet. But look at the difference here. I mean, you saw the, the baseball size onions. And these ones are, are just, I, mean, I don't even know if I'm going to get anything to speak of off them I just threw some wood chips here I'm going to spread around and in with the wood chips too I mean I have other organic material I mean these might work for boiling onions but if that alone if, if that's that picture doesn't make the difference for you let me allow this pile to speak for itself here's nothing but wood chips Okay, so if they were going to rob the soil of nitrogen, it would be terrible for your plants. Look at these volunteer tomatoes that just came up in this pile. The big old sunflower plant there, I did not plant that. Uh, each one of these piles of wood chips has a scoop, a bucket load of manure mixed in with it too. So it is uh, also got some manure, but pretty pretty amazing that pile up near the onions I don't believe has any manure there's one pile I didn't give anything to but it's not most of the manure is in there on that side but you can see even here where nothing's been mixed in that we've already got tomatoes that are I mean that's a that's a cubit for you biblical folks that's 18 inches or so of course by what by the way uh an Egyptian cubit was 20 inches, I believe. Just in case you like biblical trivia. Now let's check this out. Here I've got, I'm pretty sure this is white goosefoot. It's a weed, but it is beneficial. I'm amazed, by the way, I could thank my brother John for giving me this phone that I have. Uh, it came preloaded with Google Lens. 
I'm absolutely amazed by the number of weeds that I found in the garden last year and this year that have benefit for my diabetes and things of that nature. But check this out over here. And among the tomatoes, we have a summer squash plant that is bearing fruit there. Well, I didn't even notice this till the other day. I'm gonna take this off and we'll, we'll show this to my wife. I just rotate the summer squash until they break off. I don't yank and pull and damage the plant. How's, how's that for not even planting anything? I mean, there's got to be something to the wood chips. And I think the key is, is that you don't want to till them in. Do not till wood chips into the soil. Here's our corn. And we got a fairly decent sized patch of corn, but keep in mind, you know, this might look like a, a massive garden to someone who's you know, maybe new into gardening. It is a big garden, don't get me wrong, but I know people grow a ton more stuff than this. But being disabled, I mean, this is an undertaking that just a few years ago I wouldn't even have dreamed would be possible. But the reason this is possible is because the Lord's doing the work, right? And I'm just experimenting with different uh, techniques that help it, help me, rather, to to be able to do this with less work. As you can see, I mean, I'm not in the condition to be out here weeding every day, so weeds grow up and I deal with them when I can. How I can, that's why I made that, <laughs> what I hope was a funny video for you guys about uh, cleaning the weeds with a uh, uh, string trimmer. Uh, but while it was meant to be humorous, it also was meant to be serious as well. It did a great job, I'll show you those rows. And just a second one caution that I would give you. Here's my green beans and I was going to do near them. I decided not to because of the tomatoes. Tomatoes are very prone to soil-borne illnesses. And if you're like watering your tomatoes hard and soil splashing on them, that can create issues. And so I didn't want to be flinging soil on them with a the string trimmer and damaging the plants. But here's some beets. I got beets here. I planted beets and Swiss chard in this row together. And they're just, they're just quite literally exploding there. This Swiss chard is, I would say, 18 inches tall or so. Maybe, you know, maybe 16, 18 inches tall. And I cut this last week so that there was really uh, almost no Swiss chard left. My uncle loves Swiss chard. And he was uh, coming home off truck and he asked me, uh, he'd been out driving. He said he would like me to bring him down some Swiss chard. So I cut it up for him knowing that I would be here. And figured I'd help him have some Swiss chard while he was home. Let's see. Just saw a bunch of big green beans here. We got some decent sized green beans in here. They're kind of just starting. I got a little behind on my beans. I love green beans. There's nothing better than coming out and eating a green bean <clears throat> raw from the, from the garden. Um, but just... I guess to throw as many tips your way as I can, things that I've learned, let's take a look at these, this row of Detroit beets and Swiss chard, and let's take a look at this row of Solyndra beets over here. I've actually got what I think is technically three rows planted. I like doing the market rows, 24 to 36 inches wide, because <clears throat> I'll show you a little bit more clearer with our carrots. You end up doing less weeding, but you can see that there are weeds in there amongst those cylinder beets. However, what I did, I planted all these with a earthway cedar. And what I'll do, I'm going to step over here. Ow. A little hard to lift my left leg up over this stuff now. But in planting <coughs> with that earthway, I threw, I think, about two handfuls of beet seed into the hopper and a handful of Swiss chard. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to allow the Swiss chard to grow. And you can tell the difference because you can see right there, the Swiss chard is obviously the green and then the green with the uh, dark red purplish veins is the beets. 
So the Swiss chard grows and it shades out the row. It allows the beets to grow. You come in and cut it enough so that the beets are getting sun. And I like to cut them both and serve them together anyway. But as you can notice, I didn't have to contend with all the weeds that I did here when I planted these beets in this market row. But just to illustrate a point, I got another row of Detroits here. Here's some rows of Bolero carrots. I grew them last year. I really liked them. But as you can see, the weeds have kind of choked in around them. They'll do fine. I hit these with a weed whacker yesterday, and you can see that those big, tall piles of weeds are gone. Throughout everything, I got tons of volunteer tomatoes. That's what my Uncle Jamie calls them, volunteers. They just come up and grow on their own. But you can see that I would say in a six-foot spot, I've got three rows of boleros. And... I've been contented with the weeds, as I mentioned. You obviously have the 18 or 24 inches between your rows that you have to weed. So look at the difference here, though. My wife and I planted five rows with just a few inches. I think about three inches or so, maybe six inches. And some of them didn't grow up front here, but you can see a little clearer in the back. There's five rows of Scarlet Nance carrots in a, probably a 48-inch it's, it's, it's a little bigger than 36. It might not be a full four feet, but you can just tell that you do have to weed them once or twice in the beginning when the carrots are coming up and they're small. After that, this carrot tops will shade out so much. And it's pretty, pretty amazing to not have to contend with weeding all that stuff. Whereas with these bolero carrots you'll see that i'm gonna have to <clears throat> i'm gonna have to go in there and probably weed a little bit more all that junk that's laying there is stuff left over from the string trimmer experiment now i will show you a plant that i left on purpose sometimes there's certain weeds that as i mentioned earlier i check on the phone and they have a a good benefit so i leave them right there is plantain that stuff is amazing for skin conditions and Last year in Southern Maine, when they were battling with that uh, brown tail moth outbreak, that was one of the few things that was helping people to relieve, uh, to have any relief from that. But you got to decide, though, with these volunteers, a point worth making here is at what point does the volunteers that come up create an issue for the crops that are that you planted? So, see, I got some in here where they're. They're kind of taken over. My personal thoughts on this are if I see a tomato in the middle of the row that's that size, I leave it. If it's in the crop itself and it's small, like right around this time of year, like this one, for example, I'll probably get rid of that tomato so that I don't lose carrots. Because as you can see, I don't need to worry about how many tomatoes I have. I got more tomatoes in this area that I didn't plant than any of the tomatoes in the rest of the garden that I did plant. So don't let yourself get discouraged by weeds. You can see there's a mess of weeds here. I will, uh, this is pretty amazing stuff. Uh, this is another one that I left and I've heard on the YouTubes, on the interwebs. Now you know Abraham Lincoln says you can't believe everything you see on the internet. So obviously do your own research, but this stuff, it looks like a little mouse's ear sized leaf. It's got this greenish red stem. It's called purslane. And in the Great Depression, people survived on things like this, on eating purslane and stuff, kept them from starving. Purslane is uh, a seriously nutrient dense, um, I, I guess you would, wouldn't call it a vegetable, but uh, let's just call it a crop. So I encourage you, before you yank every weed out of your garden, look into what it is that you have. I showed you this tall white goosefoot over there. This is what they look like when they're little. And I'm pretty sure that it is blood circulation and diabetes this is good for. So I left some of those, and I certainly left the purslane because 
it's just like a sprawling succulent kind of and it's pretty my wife likes it so i left it and i think we might try a little bit of it this year who knows there may be a day where we need to have this information and have to know it now because things aren't always available you know but i encourage you guys look at a pile of wood chips the vegetables growing out of it is literally taller than the pile of wood chips itself i just say praise the lord for that thank you jesus for my son chris and his crew who dropped these off and again these are what they would call arborous wood chips because they came from a tree service that include, as I mentioned, small branches, twigs, bark, leaves, needles, all that stuff. And we'll take you over here. Sorry about the huffing and puffing. I'll do the best I can to get out here and walk. And that's another point. It's, uh, I think it's good to make that. Having a garden, even if it's going to overwhelm you, even if you don't think you can keep up with it, it's so good for you physically. I get out here and I get some exercise and plug away. It's just, it's rewarding. It's like free physical therapy with free food. I got a chair uh, that's behind us right now, but every year I like to put it in a spot in the corner. I got a little space there for it when the corn gets a little taller. When it's hot out here, I'll just come and sit in the chair in the shade, drink some coffee and water and listen to some music catch my breath think about things say prayer talk to the lord you know it's just great to be out in in nature i haven't spread these chips on this side yet i just dumped them in here with a bucket my on my cousin's tractor and just flattened them a little bit but they're not very tall like the other chips i i didn't put down more than maybe say like an inch and a half so there are some weeds coming up out of here, but they're certainly not harming my pumpkins or watermelon any. I got several plants of Luna pumpkins Elizabeth planted. And here's, I guess, well, I'm almost at the end of the garden. I might as well show you the rest here. This is an experiment Elizabeth and I decided to do. We got some weed barrier, and I think I'm going to do this in a lot of areas next year. But... What I did was I, I took a knife and I cut a slit in the weed barrier and then I dropped green beans in it. And I try to plant my green beans every two weeks, so I've always got some going. But as you can see, it's gonna be nice to not have to worry about weeding this. I, I spent quite a significant amount of time and wore myself out here weeding around my asparagus and you guys may have seen it. Uh, my Jesus is the Lord asparagus video. I bought all this stuff on clearance for a dollar for uh, four roots. And man, is that that's coming up pretty good. That's probably about a foot. And this is a these are two year roots. So this means that this year, technically, I shouldn't take anything from it. I uh, mean, I probably could, you know, try one or two here and there, but. You want to let it grow so it puts uh, its energy into root development rather than uh, trying to develop new shoots. And there's some of it that's 24 inches tall or so there. But in this cluster, I put white tags everywhere where I have a plant so that I can see. Because you don't want to, from what I'm told, you don't want to step on asparagus crowns. What will happen is they won't grow back. I can be very very tough on them so i waited until they were up high enough that i could see them then i weeded them and then obviously i was been away for a week and it's been raining and i haven't weeded it a few weeks prior to that i've just been kind of letting them grow but this is an area where i think wood chips are definitely going to be a plus because after i get this weeded one final time and i may wait till next year i may just let them do their thing this year and i may just wait till they sprout up through the ground next year and then put uh wood chips around them but here's a you probably can't see that that's about i'd say 24 inches tall and we planted 41 crowns and as i was saying with the 
asparagus on a two-year roots or whatever you you don't take anything from them the first year that you plant them and the next year you can take 50 percent for the first three weeks and then the following year i can take 100 percent of whatever comes up for the first couple weeks and if you see here i planted three mounds of summer squash this was planted before you saw that plant uh, that I got this summer squash from. These were planted way before anything had popped out of those piles of wood chips. So it's just that, and this in the middle here, all those tomatoes and that crab apple tree, that was just a compost pile that we plowed around and wanted to leave this front corner for asparagus. Having quite a battle with the potato beetles here. If you look at how destructive the things are. I hit them pretty hard with the neem oil. This the liquid seven spray that I sometimes will use seven on potatoes. I try to be careful with any chemicals or anything, but these beetles are going crazy. So I hit them with seven dust uh, about a week ago. Elizabeth actually did it, and then uh, yesterday I gave them neem oil. So we're gonna come out and take a bucket with Dawn dish soap, and we'll just pick off all of the bugs that we can, and. You know, basically just drown them. My great-grandfather's brother lived next door when I was growing up. And he would always take a flat, like a one by 4 pine board. And he would take it and he would lay it under the leaf, support leaf with it. Then he had a rubber mallet and he would just smash the bugs like that. And I can always remember him being like 80 years old, bent over doing that. And I always thought, man, I hope I can, hope I can be working in the garden when I'm that age. Well, 